Welcome to Straight Talk with Carly Lissa Thorne, and I have with me today Devin Vogel. Welcome, Devin. Thank you, Carly. I would love for you to share with the audience about your book and to give them the title, and I'd love for you to tell them the inspiration behind the title of your book. Well, and the inspiration behind the title is just because uh, someone's aura is, says so much about them, and witches are looked upon differently, and I'm trying to get a positive message about witches, out, like good witches out there, and so a witch's aura was basically a beautiful thing, and that's what I wanted it to be. Let's go back. Let's start with the actual title, though, because a lot of people didn't hear the actual title. So let's start with the actual title of the book. Oh, A Witch's Aura. So I actually love to talk about auras because, to me, I've, I've studied metaphysics my entire life, and a lot of people have no conception of what auras are. So could you actually describe for people, because we're, me and you I know what auras are, but a lot of people have no concept of what an aura is. So could you actually enlighten people with what an aura is? Yes, to me an aura is the energy of, that you carry around yourself and if you are negative you know you're gonna have negative a negative aura but if you're positive and you see things in a beautiful light your aura is gonna be just gorgeous and beautiful and bright. So let's go back to a little bit and I want, I've talked to you at length and other people have not, so I'd love for you to also go into a little bit about your personal story and how you actually began writing your book and where you are now and a little bit of your journey and how you got to where you are now. Okay, um, I've always been a writer. I began with poetry um, and I never really thought to write a book and then um, I wrote this A Witch's Aura in a month I thought of this story and it just came pouring out of me and so I it came out of me in a month so I, you know I needed to go back and it, it's been redone and rewritten but the main story stayed the same and um, a year after I wrote it my husband and I got married in September and then in November I was diagnosed with leukemia and while I was sitting in the hospital room um, I refuse to let myself be a victim. I always was like, you know, this this is happening, this sucks. I was like, you know, I'm not a cancer patient. The cancer is a small part of who I am. I was a person going through cancer, and I had so many other things to give to the world, especially the book, and the book is kind of what I fought to, you know, I, my son and my family, of course, but the book was like, I have so much to give the world. I can't I can't give up yet and so it, I kept working on it and working on it and working on it until it got picked up by a publisher. So let's go a little bit into that journey because like you I've, I've gone through my own medical journey and I, I like you have had this mantra of my own I didn't want to be a victim so I always chose to be a victor over a victim and I think a lot of people don't understand the struggle that people who've had struggles with medical issues, what it's like to have that fire or that that fight within us. So I'd love for you to actually share a bit of that journey and, and understand that mentality of choosing to fight and not to be a victim. So if you're open to that, I'd love for you to share a little bit about your journey and what it takes to be a fighter and what it takes to have that strength and have that family that surrounds you and and to, to fight with you and to give you that strength and to have a mantra of your own of whatever that was for you. My son um, is the main, he, he had some difficulties when he came into the world. He's disabled and he has di diabetes, but when he was born, I had this fight that it just came out of me and I was like, no, he's not going to die, he's going to make it. So when I got diagnosed with cancer, I first I was really scared and then that fight came out and I was like, you know what, no, it's not going to get me. I want to live. I'm not done with this world. And so I just knew I had that drive and I had a positive mental attitude knowing that I wasn't a victim. I had a really horrible circumstance that I just had to soldier through and I kept thinking positively and I actually like would I was in the hospital for a month 
but I was supposed to stay in my room and I would sneak out of the, you know, I was only supposed to stay on my floor, but I knew the whole hospital. I snuck outside. I knew all of the grounds. Like I would go find a pond and I found some geese and I sent a picture to my husband and he was like, where are you? What are you doing? And I was like, I got to be normal. This isn't, this is a little part of who I am. I can't be a cancer patient. I am a person that's battling cancer, but I'm Devin and I am not done with this world and I'm not going anywhere. What are some tips and ideas you can give to people who are going through struggles to give them give them strength to not to give up or, or not choose to be in a, a victim mentality? Believe in yourself. Your mind is such a powerful thing. And if you let yourself think that you're going to be, you know, it's going to get you or, you know, you're going to, not make it through it, chances are you aren't because you are feeding that energy, like auras again, you're feeding that energy, you're pulling negativity to you. And if you think positively and just from the very beginning say, you know what, no, this sucks, but I'm going to do it and I'm going to soldier through it and I am going to live because that's what I want. And you fill your brain with positivity and you can make, you can make it through anything. And I truly believe, you know, going back to my son when he was born and he almost died, the neonatologist was so adamant that he wasn't going to make it off the ventilator and I cried really hard and then as soon as she left the room I was like no no you know and I didn't let anyone think that way I said do not go into his room and say goodbye you know he's gonna live and two days later he was accidentally extubated and he he made it he's weak you know he's got his weakness but I mean it's that that thought in your head that no I am going to live and I'm not done you know So let's get into a bit of your book. What is the story of your book, The Witch's Aura? A Witch's Aura is a, it's a fantasy story about a young girl, and she's, you know, coming of age kind of story, falling in love for the first time. It's kind of, it's, I take, I took, the, my, like a, sorry, I took a lot of time developing the characters and, you know, the heroine and the hero, and, um, it kind of follows their journey about first loves, and but she's also learning things about herself. She, you know, she's finding out that she's a witch and how to channel, you know, how to channel her magical abilities as well as like learning, you know, her first love, but also how does she tell him this huge secret of hers? So it's it's definitely got a lot of a lot of, it's packed full of different kind of stories in it but it's the first in a series and I'm just in my head I'm taking these characters to amazing places now you're going to be doing you said a, a chronicle so what does your chronicle look like how many books are going to be in the series um so far I have three written I have half of the fourth um, that I had to go back and you know fix the first one and I still know how the fourth is going to end, and then I have ideas for the fifth one, but the fifth one keeps growing in my head that it might be six. It might be six in the series. But then I also have a portion of the book where um, there's a witch's history that they had to cut out because it was too long, so I even may do pre you know, prequel series if the, if the book really takes off to where I want it to go. So you said that the first three are already written, however, they're just starting with this first one that's out now, currently, that's published. Is that correct? Right, yes. The first one is out now, and you can get it on Amazon and, um, uh, I think, Nookbook, but we're going to start editing the second one. <laughs> and since this is also a podcast, where can people find you? They can find me on Facebook. Um, I also have a, um, uh, on my Facebook, I have links to all my other websites. So start with Facebook. Um, you can find me on Amazon. Um, my book's on Amazon, but it's also available through Barnes & Noble. And so um, I do have a Twitter as well. So, and it's really easy. I have all the links on the Facebook, so you can really just start from there. And that would be facebook.com slash a witch's aura. A witch's aura. Okay. Since this is a podcast, we have to actually tell them because they can't read. Like, since we're on video right now, they can actually see your lower third. But since it's also a podcast, we have to actually verbally tell them where they can find you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you can find her at facebook.com slash a witch's aura, correct? 
Right. Okay. And if they wanted to Google you, how would they find you? Would they put in Devin Vocal or they put in a witch's aura? Either way, um, my name would be the easiest to Google. It's D E V O N V O L K E L. Perfect. And of the the, why don't you tell us a little bit about the seek? Like you said, there's the there's a trilogy, and then beyond the trilogy, what like you said, you've written the 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 second and the third. Where is the continuing journey? You said the first one is where they fall in love and they, she's having to share a little bit about her secret, about being a witch. What is the second and third? Where, where is the, the, the story continuing into the second and third and beyond? Um, well, I can't say too much. I don't want to give too much right. away. But um, the second one, I have um, something really crazy happens and... See, I, I, it's hard to say without revealing something, but I introduce new characters. So there's, a, you know, and I think the, the first one is mainly about developing the story, you learn, you know, who the main characters are. The second one is, really has a lot more action in it, so it's not as slow paced as the first one, but it still has a, the same characters, but I introduce many more magical characters as well, and one of them. His name, I'll give you his name. His name is Abel, and he's he's my favorite. I lo well, I love Abel, so I take the story to incredible places that you'd never even guess. Reading the first one, you would have no idea, you know, the second one, where I'm taking it. So basically you're building more and more characters, and are you bringing more, uh, how can I say this, more magical elements into it? Oh, yes, yes. The magic continues um, because Shade... My main character, she learns how to harness her own magic, but she it turns out she's one of the most powerful witches of them all. And so she's learning things about herself that she didn't even know she could do. And, you know, the, the I introduce another magical family that's Abel and his family is magical and kind of it kind of snowballs actually. Each book I get more and more into the magic and more of what Shade can do with her powers. Wonderful. And so, how do, how um, I'm trying to say is, how would you say this the the witch's aura? How would you say that does this parallel out, parallel at all with your own life in terms of have you in developing these characters? And the reason why I'm getting at this in terms of magic or magical powers, how would you say this at all ties in with your own life in terms of having magical powers, if you will? Has that helped you at all in your own life dealing with cancer? Because I have found dealing with people, in my own experience, dealing with people that have had a lot of illnesses or challenges in illness, that they in their own way have used their own magical powers, if you will, to, in other words, use those as strength to get, in other words, carry them through their illnesses. So that's why I'm saying, do you find developing these characters in a way has given you strength in your own life? Oh, absolutely. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. I totally am 100%. I am one of those uh, people. I am, I am Wiccan, and that's a, a good thing, and I'm trying to get a positive message about Wiccans out there. But um, building my characters actually helped me embrace my own faith. Oh, my. It's helped me embrace my own faith, and it definitely has, you know, because I've let it. I've always been Wiccan. I just haven't practiced you know, we do work with spells, and they're good spells, you know, like herbs and, and, and things like that, and I have opened my arms completely to it, and I definitely believe in the magical abilities in human beings, and it, you know, magic is real if you just have to believe in it, and I definitely, you know, I recently just finished my cancer treatment, so I was on a daily oral chemo, and I just was done on March 11th and um, it's scary it's very scary knowing that I'm not treating it anymore and so every day it's like you have to physically and mentally get yourself through it and just believe in the universe and know that like you're gonna be okay and kind of take that leap of faith and I, I truly believe that you know it's it's the magic abilities in people and the mind can do wonderful things if you believe if you let it you know and now, how do you deal with that with your son who is diabetic? Do you kind of use magical creatures, or you know what I'm saying, uh, storytelling, if you will? How uh, you know kids always find, whether it be a Disney character or, or 
one of the whatever it is, uh, you know, a Power Ranger or something, some sort of magic, if you will, to help him get through what he's going through. Yes, yes. Um, he has a bear. It's uh, Rufus the bear, and Rufus is diabetic. And, well, sorry, I shouldn't say it. You don't want to ever say a person is diabetic because that's only a little part of them. So he has diabetes as well. And so Gage gets to check Rufus's blood and also give Rufus his insulin at the times he's get in, he gets insulin. So it's really, you know, the, he's a magical bear with, and he has diabetes. So it's really, it's made it, it's been very hard because he is only five years old. So it's, it's super hard to, for, to go through with such a little guy and explain to him, you know, he thinks that he's only going to have it for a little bit and it's going to go away. And, you know, you have to tell him, I'm sorry, you know, it's, I wish, I wish I could take it from you, but, you know, it's not going to go away, you know. So I, I think it's a very powerful tool using characters or, like you say, magic, if you will, especially when they are that little. So, so that's why I was kind of using those parallels with your book and characters, how you can use that, you know, with yourself, what you're going through, and then using that with your son as he, as he gets older and older and older, being able to use some sort of characters even from your book um, to helping, you know, encourage him as he gets older and as, he, as, he, as he's going through his journey, you know, empowering him with tools to, you know, here's a character as he, you know, as he evolves. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a really great uh, thing. I think storytelling is such a powerful tool and just to, um, in our mindsets, like you said, it's such a powerful tool to get through anything. And that we do have the power of choice to wake up in the morning and be positive or wake up in the morning and be negative. And, and it is true, our auras are fascinating and, and beautiful energetic things and what we bring into our field is what we project out. So it is a really fascinating thing. Is there anything else you would like to share with the audience either about yourself and your journey or either about the book? Um, I really just encourage people, um, you know, because it is it's very hard in this day and age to be Wiccan because of the bad idea, stereotype that people have about it. And so I just encourage people, I mean, Wiccans are the biggest tree huggers you'll ever meet, and just encourage people to, like, research, you know, research it before you judge it and know, you know, like, I know there's, people are entitled to their own beliefs, and I'm, you know, whatever anyone wants to believe, I'm okay with. And so just keeping an open mind, and, you know, the book, I really, I I believe the story was given to me to tell it. The universe wanted this story told, and it picked me to tell it. And I just encourage people to read it. It's it, it is truly a an awesome story. And I mean, it's I'm going s some amazing places with the entire series. So it's like people know that when I got cancer, I could well. I mean, I I had a lot of things to live for, and one of them was to get this story out there and that it, it truly got me through a world of scariness and darkness and it truly is a beautiful blessing full of light and I just really encourage people to pick it up and at least you know read the blurb on the back and see if it's something they would be interested in reading because I truly believe it was given to me to tell. Well thank you so much for joining me and I'm, I'm really excited a, that you joined me, and two, I, you're an amazing young woman, and you know, blessings to you and your family, and you are a strength and a beacon for many to follow, and you're doing an amazing job raising a beautiful son, and you're doing an amazing job letting people know about the Wiccan community and raising awareness about that it's not this horrible, scary thing, and you're, it, is, it is an amazing message out there for anyone to know that we do not need to judge others, we need to be open-minded and do our research before we automatically label others and, and anything in life. So I really appreciate that. So again, please let everyone know where they can find you so that they can find your book. And um, So please let everyone know where they can find you. Okay, um, you can either find me on Facebook. It would be www.facebook.com slash a witch's aura. Um, no apostrophe between the S. It's just one word, which is Aura. Or you can Google my name or my book, um, and that again is Devin Vocal, D E V O N V O L K E L. Again, it's a witch's Aura. Um, I 
Penrose Publishing is the one who my publishers, so you can find me on their page. And like I said, I have once you find me on Facebook, I have ways to find anything you want about me. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. You've been with your host, Carly Lissa Thorne, and you can find me at carlylissathorne.com. I wish everyone a wonderful evening, and I look forward to seeing you next week. As usual, I've put together a wonderful blog post, which will have all of Devin's information and ways to find her everywhere, including all of her links. And I look forward to seeing you all next week. Have a wonderful evening, everybody.